Greetings viewers, this is CP666 signing on for a very special video. Alright, this of course is obviously a laptop computer. That is the price that I paid for it. It says Dell model number TS30G. LMM 133ST power input, all of that information. So obviously this is, you know, one of those wonderful Dell systems that is heavy. You know, the heavy brick Dells. There's actually a light right there. I'm not sure what exactly it is. It might be a power indicator. Obviously, as you might be able to see as well, the hinges are kind of bad. On this side got one of the latches, or what's supposed to be a latch, power supply connections, headphone and microphone, PCM CIA, 2 type 2, 1 type 3. I believe that's how that works. I'm not sure if it's card bus capable or not. It might not be. This right here is for the battery. We've got a floppy drive here. This is actually removable. You could put a CD ROM there as well. Looks like a blanking plate, probably for a modem would have likely gone there. If we turn it around to the back, this is kind of a little droopy. Serial, parallel, VGA, of course the docking station connector, and the PS2 port. Now the docking station connector is also see it look it can look like that by you know default that's the blanking plate. Or, what you could do is you could pop this piece up here, I'm not sure if I could do it with one hand, and close it, and then you have access to the docking connector without having to expose all the other ports. Oh yes, and there's a Kensington lock port right there. When we open it up, we can see the display. I think that would be maybe an 11 or 12 inch display. Dell Latitude LM. It's got an LCD status screen. That was common back when these were new. Power button. Stereo speakers, which would have been a really good thing to have back at the day when this thing would have been brand new as well. Not very common. I think usually laptops are ordered with just a single speaker, such as what you've got there. But then again, I wasn't around when these things were in their heyday. I only started playing around with them after they were long obsolete. It's got a Pentium MMX. It's actually a P133. Designed for Microsoft Windows 95. That is what it's running at present, but will not be what it's running later on. I've got some grandiose plans for this system. It's got... Oh, 72 megabytes of RAM and a 1.4 gigabyte IBM IDE hard drive as well. It's got a trackpad. That would have been an interesting thing to have back then. I've used nicer keyboards, but this certainly is really nice, especially when you compare it to modern chiclet jobs like that. And that's all that I can really think of to say right off the bat, just looking at the system. But I said that this was going to be a special video. So far, there's nothing really here that is all that special. It's just yet another second generation Pentium system from the 1990s. Not really much all that interesting here. But there's more than meets the eye here because this system actually bears a resemblance to my first ever laptop computer. So let's go all the way back to 2003. At least I think it was 2003. It might have been really early 2004. My father had brought home three almost identical Dell Latitude XPI laptop computers. One of them was a P100 ST, it was basically the outlier, and then the other two were P133 STs. Every single one of them had some kind of a problem that prevented it from working, you know, fully. So what I did is I took, with the help of my, my dad obviously, I we took both of, the, all three of them and built two working machines, one of which was perfectly working that I used and then the other one was just a kick around machine that had a bad floppy drive and I, 
maybe something else that was wrong with it. I can't remember what it was. I think it was sometimes it wouldn't boot up right because the RAM was bad or something like that. But either way, it was there. And I, I really wish those systems were still around because apparently they're very hard to find. This is probably the closest I'm ever going to come to a Dell Latitude XPI P133 ST. They're out there. It had no speakers. It had no LCD status screen. It just had a bunch of LED lights. And it had a trackball instead of a trackpad. I would rather have the trackball over the trackpad because these early trackpads are not really all that great. But, if this is the only thing I can get, this is the only thing I can get. So I paid $12.99 for this thing. That was almost a year ago now. Something that has this much sentimental value to somebody, you'd think that they wouldn't wait that long to mess around with it. Now, there was a slight problem. You see, I didn't get the power supply with this particular score. And that is the power connector there. It's a 16.2 volt input the power supply. Oddball voltage, oddball connector. I know the pinout for that connector though, so I could very easily probably power it myself, but I wanted to get a power supply. Power supplies at the time on eBay were about $60, not including shipping or anything else. So I waited. And it took about a year before one finally arrived. If you're looking for one yourself, this is what you need. I would strongly advise that you get the actual genuine power supply, which is what this is. It's Dell TSA-8, part number 99500. Outputs 2.6 amps, 16.2 volt DC. Sucks 34 watts from the wall. For use with information technology equipment only. So, let's go ahead and plug it up, shall we? Go ahead and have a grand fire up. Because why not? Obviously, if this is going to be a computer video, you want to see the system power up. The power supply has got a green light on it. So if you don't have a green light on your power supply, it's either not the correct power supply, a generic knockoff, or it doesn't work. Okay, let's see here. Look at that. We've got a green light. Status indicators. The battery is, of course, 100% toast. We'll fire it up. Here we go. Let's enter set up. IBM DMCA 21440. The amount of system memory has changed for the suspended disk file is absent. Okay. Oh, I didn't even go into the BIOS like I asked. So I guess we're going to boot up Windows 95, eh? This computer is going to be an example. I'm sure as you can see, we've got quite a few things on the desktop. And some of these are very obviously personal files. Files. A folder called Resume. That's wonderful. Proposal. Pictures. All kinds of other things that are probably very, very, very private. That's a very interesting file name for a text file, especially an empty one. I didn't look into it. And I also like how there is a folder here called To Be Printed, and then elsewhere on the desktop, right over here, you got a shortcut to be printed on the desktop. Gotta love that, eh? Okay, so, what do we got here? Windows 95, this is OSR2. Somebody upgraded it to IE 5.5, that's really odd. Pentium, it's actually a Pentium 133 with 72 megabytes of RAM. Somebody must have splurged for this thing because 72 megabytes is an odd number. Okay, what do we got for sound devices? So ESS ES 1688. Cirrus Logic PCIC compatible PCMCA controller. So I don't believe that's card bus. It might be. Dial up adapter. Which is interesting. I thought this thing didn't have a modem on it. 
touchpad generic PS2. <laughs> New Magic, yes. New Magic Magic Graph 128ZV graphics. Generic IDE disk. Well, it's obviously a 1.4 gigabyte hard drive. And if we take a look at how much space is used, it's about roughly half of the disk. Okay, so I wanted to go into the BIOS here. Let's see if it'll actually let me do that. So we'll reboot the system. It is not the fastest thing in the world. Which is why I'm not going to be keeping this Windows installation. Remember that screen? Okay. Obviously this thing thinks it's 1988. Well, it's not 1988. Let's see if Windows 95 freaks out if I actually set the date. Okay. It's October... What? October 20th. 2016. And look at that, it's even Y2K compliant. 9.21 p.m., so that's what? 21. 21.21. Got two options, it looks like. Diskette first, or hard disk only, it means don't boot from the diskette drive. 1.44 megabyte. Maybe this wasn't an option. Maybe it was just the 1.44 meg floppy. Although I'm pretty sure that you could get a CD-ROM. That is removable. Integrated peripherals. Apparently, it's in bi-directional mode. Usually that's just set to normal. Diskette mode, no reboot. Okay. Infrared. I don't think this has got infrared on it. Maybe it does, though. Obviously, it's got a serial port. Video mode, simultaneous, LCD, or CRT. You can enable or disable the tr the touchpad, or trackpad is what I call it. CD-ROM drive speed, yes, that answers that question. You could definitely have a CD-ROM in here. Admin passwords, power information, excuse me. Exit, saving changes, and all of that. Okay. Remember when you used to actually get, you know, BIOS splashes from VGA cards and all of that? And those days are gone. There's some information. That screen's gone as well. You don't see that on modern laptops. I think display stretch is on. Although I don't recall seeing that as an option in the BIOS. This thing doesn't have as great of a BIOS as the XPI did. It seems to have just a generic Phoenix Note BIOS on it. Actually, it does have a generic Phoenix Note BIOS on it. That's, where, that's what the splash was. Windows has updated your clock as a result of daylight saving time. Please verify that your new clock settings are correct. Well, it's not 1023. That's not correct. So we'll set it, even though it'll forget it in five minutes anyways. So I think that's really it. There's not much else I can think of to describe with this particular computer without going through all the files, and I'm not doing that on camera. I will probably save them. I'm going to have to figure out how to save them. I think I'm going to just end up using you know, WinRAR or something and then transferring it using a serial connection to a computer that can understand it instead of going the floppy drive route, because I think a lot of these files are probably bigger than 1.44 megabytes. Now that's 39 kilobytes, so evidently not. Last modified in 2004, so I believe that this system was in fact maybe last used around 04, 05. Let's take a look at some of these folders. 2003 2003 2003, that's getting older here. Yeah, 2003, those are obviously, that's from 2001, 2003. 
2003. Lots of files from 2003. 03. This is probably also 03. Yes. Shortcut to to be printed. When was that made? That was made 2004. That was last modified in 2004. So I believe that everything here, you know, 2004 was probably when this computer was last used, and that would make sense. You know, 2004 was late news for a Pentium system, anyways. At least not for me. For people other than me, anyways. You know, most average people who would have had a computer like this would have moved on to something bigger and better. Windows XP machine would have been in full swing by that point. Alright, so what else have we got on here? Obviously, we got Quick Tax 2003 and 2002. Some kind of dial-up connection there. We've got WinZip. That's pretty cool. That'll make my life easier. Set up for Microsoft Internet Explorer 3. QuickBooks, Will Expert Demo, Acrobat Reader, ePost. That's something for the local post office. We've got a copy of Microsoft Office. Oh, what would that be? If I had to guess, that's probably Office, two th uh, office 97. I believe that's what that would be. QuickTime. Oh, that's an old version of QuickTime. Mouseware. Thought it'd be interesting to see if I can get Windows 3.0 to run on this. That's my plan, is to run Windows 3.0. Because that's what I had on my Latitude uh, P133 ST. And I know that's going to be a complete waste of a Pentium 133 and, you know, the speakers and all of that. But guess what? I've got Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 machines over there. So, there you go, excuse me. Yeah, Quick Tax, Palm Desktop, that was for a Palm Pilot. Looks like Acrobat Reader 4.0. What's the copyright date on that? That says 5.0. The folder said 4.0 on the... There, what's the copyright? Copyright 2001. Remember when programs used to display splash screens? Yeah, those are that's a forgotten thing now too. Yeah, those were the days. It'd be a nice trip down memory lane once I get uh, Windows 3.0 and programs installed on this though. That, that ought to be interesting. Although I never really did much with Windows that system. I really just used it for making slideshows. Yeah, that used to be what I used to do with computers. I used to spend all of my time making random slideshows. <laughs> what a way to spend your time, eh? Of course, I never really used the internet because I only had 14.4K dial-up back then. That was horrible. So I just never used it. Signal 102 Firefighter 1 and 2 Study Helper. That's interesting. I might have to save that. I might see if I can put something like Norton Ghost on here and save a save an image of the hard drive. Although I could use the uh, IBM ThinkPad R40 to do that. It might be relatively easy. I might just do that. But anyways, let's see what version of Office this is. I'm pretty sure it's 97. Yep, Office 97. I remember all of these slideshow templates. Old school, man. <laughs> wow, remember that image. I wish you could get that image on a slide. Actually, you probably could. I never figured it out, though. Remember the online? Wow, I'm really taking a trip down memory lane in this video. <laughs> okay, I think I should probably cut this off. I, haven't, I don't really have anything else that I need to say about the computer anyways. So, stay tuned for more videos of this Dell Latitude LM M133ST. It'll make a nice addition to my computer collection. It'll basically replace the NEC Versa 6030X, because this is, this is closer to what I had as a youngster. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then. I believe this system even has the same hard drive as the Versa 6030X. Of course, my system had a smaller drive. It had an 810 megabyte IPM drive. I still have that sitting around.